Welcome to A Fork in Time, the alternate history podcast. Welcome back to A Fork in Time, the Alternate History Podcast. I'm Don Shelley, your host. Today I'm joined by my co-host and co-founder. That would be Alexis Shelley. Alexis, how are we doing today? Good. Good, good. Uh, We're actually getting to record in person thanks to the benefits of the holidays, so we're taking advantage of that for this episode, which when we post is actually going to be our first episode of the year 2020. Now, it's the year 2020 because we are following which calendar? That would be the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar, uh, which is the predominant calendar around the world, uh, primarily that's used for business purposes and in, and in, and in civic purposes. But uh, as many people may or may not know, the Gregorian calendar is not the only calendar that has ever existed, nor is it the uh, only calendar that, yeah, I guess, is even in existence now. So I could just as easily... Be wishing you on this January 2nd of 2020, uh, happy, um, if I were following the Julian Day calendar, happy 2458850.5, if it were midnight, uh, that, that, that's the Julian Day. I could certainly be wishing you something that relates to year 1441 under the Islamic calendar, uh, which is an important calendar for a lot of folks around the world. An older calendar, year 5780 under the Jewish calendar. Uh, or I could be wishing you some weird string of numbers under the Mayan long count, <laughs> which I thought we were going to totally get rid of that, what, in 2000... 2012. 2012, because yeah. everything was supposed to go away, yeah, not just the everything Mayan, was supposed to go away. Not just the Mayan long count, but that's why we are in uh, the, I guess it's the 13th cycle epoch, whatever it is, that just rolled over here recently in uh, in 2012. So as you might have guessed by this introduction today, we're going to be talking about some type of historical what-if that deals with what subject? Calendars? Calendars, perhaps. Either that or we've just wasted two minutes of everyone's time uh, just exploring the fact that uh, that there's more than one calendar system. Uh, So we thought this would be a good episode to actually lead off the new year with, since the new year is based around the concept of a Calendar. calendar. So actually, Alexis, the first question that I really want to ask before we start going down this path and figuring out how we're going to turn this into a what if, because that's also one of the challenges of today, is for this year, if we were working under the the proposed world calendar, which first, I guess, reared its head in the 1930s, yeah. give or take, 1920s and 1930s, if we, were, uh, if we were following the world calendar, we'll talk about that a little bit more. I'm just curious, a lot of times, for example, in, in 2019, we just celebrated... Uh, Christmas, yes, uh, which uh, is an important holiday uh, for much of the world, both secularly and, of course, for those who are practicing uh, Christians. What day of the week did Christmas fall on here in 2019? So Christmas fell on a Wednesday this year. Correct. And next year, will it fall on a Wednesday? It will not. Okay. And it will actually fall next year on a... Friday. Friday. And that's because of an odd little thing called a leap year, which we will have in 2020. We'll talk a little bit... We'll definitely have to talk about leap years and leap days as we move through this. But generally speaking, from one year to the next, under our Gregorian calendar, the particular date on the calendar. We need to be very careful here about talking about the difference between dates and... Days. Days, yes. Yes, we need to keep that straight. But a particular date, which, for example, would be like December 25th, will slide through the calendar normally incrementing by one day forward in the seven-day week each year. The exception to that is if we encounter a date in a year after a leap day, yeah. then it's actually going to increment by two. So next year, instead of Christmas being on Thursday, which would normally be the pro- progression if it were on Wednesday the previous year, is it will fall on Friday next year because of the leap day, but normally it would be on Thursday. I think we may have confused or not confused everyone, but as you can see, just by having this conversation, calendars are super, super, super simple, right? Yeah, they're pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it wouldn't have required me taking two minutes to explain <laughs> that phenomena if calendars work like a lot of other things that were that were simple. We'll talk about what makes them complicated. That'll be part of what the podcast is about today. But I deviated from the question that I was going to ask, which is if we were following the world calendar, which was, I guess, first proposed uh, in 
back in 1930. Yes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what the world calendar is. What year or what day would World's Day fall on in 2020? That would be W. It would fall on W. Yes. So you mean Wednesday? No. I mean W. You mean W. I'm familiar with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm not familiar with a day of the week called W. That's because we don't live under the world calendar system. Uh huh. <laughs> so we get a new W every. So we get an eight day week under the world calendar system. Not every week. Not every week. No. Okay. How many days are in a week under the world calendar system? Well, seven. Okay. Except for when there's a world day. And that falls on... It's the day after December 30th. Notice I said December 30th, not December 31st. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, As you can see, we're sort of having a little bit of fun with the concept here of this concept called... It's not World Day, by the way. It's World's World's Day, Day with plural. And we'll come back and talk about that. But... uh, It's actually an example of what are some of the problems with calendars that we'll talk about and why we've led here. So our historical what if today, we're not just having a let's talk about calendars (laughs) podcast. I'm having having a uh, a little bit of a um, uh, oh uh, the show that would uh, Big Bang Theory type of moment. This is not calendars with Don and Alexis, (laughs) such as flags. It's not fun with calendars. Yes. Uh, Although I think we will have fun with calendars, but actually we're going to talk about historical what ifs because calendars are important. We we use them to track time, uh, particularly for us as being history buffs. We use them to understand when something happened precisely. What date did that happen on? And we'll discover that for a lot of history, uh, that was not necessarily something that was well-defined. That really is more of a Modern concept, if you want to take modern back to a couple of millennia, uh, but actually knowing, you may know what year something happened in or approximately what season or time, but the actual date's a fairly new concept. Right. So uh, we've sort of spent plenty of time here doing the setup, uh, except to conclude that by saying that our historical what if today is actually going to sort of be two what ifs. One of them is, what if we were not living under the Gregorian calendar, which is a revision to, a very slight revision, uh, to a calendar that preceded that and served well for well over two millennia. What calendar would that be? That'd be the Julian calendar. Known as the Julian calendar, uh, not because of uh, it has anything to do with Julian Fries, not because it has anything to do with a guy named Julian, except it has to do with a guy named Julius. It was the calendar that reformed that, was, that took place as the result of Julius Caesar, mm-hmm. and that happens in 46 B.C. Yes. So the Julian calendar, which is later modified slightly to become the Gregorian calendar, that's by Pope Gregory the 13th, Mm -hmm. uh, to correct a minor issue with the Julian calendar. Essentially, this calendar, where we have the months more or less as we know them, uh, organized the way they are with the links that they are, has existed now for well over 2,000 years for most of the world. Yep. And became sort of the standard of the world because eventually it became uh, the standard for the Roman Empire, Uh, The Roman Empire then being succeeded, uh, its influence on Europe and the other places that it had influence on, its influence on Christianity, as Rome officially adopts Christianity as the the official religion. And so ultimately the calendar that Rome is using, just like so many things that we have, uh, carries forward to today. So I may refer to the Gregorian calendar and call it the Gregorian calendar. I may use the term Julian slash Gregorian because it's really the same calendaring concept. Uh, So our what if today will be exploring what if we never had the Julian calendar, which means we would have never had the revision to it, the Gregorian calendar. And then the sort of the secondary what if we'll talk about is what is what if we had adopted maybe back in the early part of the 20th century, something like some of these newly proposed modern calendars. Right. And we may use the world calendar just to stand in as a representative for a number of those so that we don't keep chasing down the topic. The world calendar is fun. I went on some rabbit holes, so. Yeah, you can, uh, and, and by the way, you can do that on W, which is both a day and a month, I guess, under the world calendar. Yeah, it's also a holiday. Important to remember. Uh, and I, is it, what type of holiday? It's a, it's a world holiday. It's a world holiday. <laughs> Hence, war, but, but, but. For, apparently for multiple worlds, because it's World's <laughs> Day. Day. Um, we'll get into that. Yeah, and, and we will include links in the show notes to a lot of the things that we have here, because some of these things 
Uh, they say that some things don't play well for radio. This Some of this stuff may not play well for a non-visual meeting. Sometimes a calendar needs to be something that you can actually look at. Look at. Yeah, novel concept. Yeah, and so, so we'll pick up from there. But let's begin with the problem just in general before we explore down the what-ifs that led us to, again, we talked so often about before we explore the what-if, we have to explore the what-did. So what is the fundamental problem with calendars, Lex? Fundamental problem with calendars is that calendars are pretty subjective in that they're this thing that we put on top of natural phenomenon. So for example, the Julian calendar, one of the biggest problems with it was that it didn't follow the solar year. Okay, so let's let's define a couple of things here because we've used terms that are familiar to us that we use every day, but we've used them interchangeably. We use a term called a year. What is a year? So in the modern Western context of the word, a year is 365 days. Okay. And it represents what? It represents the span of time that the Earth goes around the sun. In other words, it, <laughs> a year is how long it takes the Earth to do a complete rotation. rotation and circle around the sun. Yes. So you would think that we could have just one definition for what that is, right? You would think you would, that is not the case. That is not the case. And the reason is that what we discover is that not only is the Earth revolving around the sun, but the Earth is also revolving around its own axis, axis. which means that it turns, which is a good thing. Without that, we wouldn't have this concept called day and night, night to measure the days that make up the year. But what we discover is that the Earth going around the sun, depending on how you measure it, uh, they refer to what's called a tropical year, which is this, which is the, the coming back on the, essentially at, on a day that you've made the complete circle around when the sun is at a particular place, following the sun for this, which is relevant. And there's what's referred to as a sidereal year, which is actually looking at the stars. Mm -hmm. And because of the Earth's rotation, we discover that a sidereal year is just a little bit longer. It's a very small mm -hmm. fraction longer than a, uh, sometimes referred to as the mean solar year, or the tropical year. Actually, there's like three different definitions yep. for years. And they're very, very small. And so, you know, in one particular year to the next, you wouldn't necessarily notice this difference. But built up over time, right. it does make a difference. And in fact, we talk about a year being 365 days, except what is it in a leap year? 366. So if it's 365 sometimes and 366 the other times, why is there a difference? And the reason is the Earth's transit around the sun in any of those ways that you want to measure it is not exactly matched up with the rotation around its axis for day and night. Right. And so it actually takes approximately, the decimal is really, really long, <laughs> but it takes approximately 365 and one quarter, quarter. days for the Earth to go around the sun, which means that once every four years, you have an extra day. Yeah. And so it's pretty easy to see why, as a general rule of thumb, once every four years, we add to our calendar this thing called a leap day, leap day in a leap year. year. And we do that so that we, we take care of that extra day that has built up and we get things back in sequence. Yep. Now... The sun is just one way that you can actually measure time using an astronomical body. The stars related to this. I mentioned the sidereal year versus a, what's called a tropical year. But a lot of older cultures and a lot of cultures follow an entirely different object in the sky when it comes yep. to measuring time. What do they follow? That'd be the lunar year with the moon. They follow the moon. And the, the moon does an interesting thing in a regular cycle and that it goes through, as we know, it goes through phases. Mm -hmm. So they'll start with what, Lex? That would be the full moon, the half moon, the quarter moon, and the new moon. Yeah, the new moon is normal. The new moon, by the way, refers to when there is basically the moon is black or there's just the small yep. sliver on the side. We're all familiar with what a full moon and there's what's called a waxing and a waning moon yep. that happen in between. And so, which are like the crescent shapes and then there's the half moon. But basically a lunar cycle is somewhere around between 28 and 29 days. Also not exactly matched to the spin of the earth. And so in a number of cultures, uh, particularly uh, religious cultures that we're very familiar with, lunar the lunar cycles are very important. That's true in Judaism. That's true in, in Islam. It's true to a degree in Christianity because 
Uh, for example, Easter is calculated off of the moons as they relate to uh, an, astro an astronomical phenomenon known as the equinox, which relates to the length of days in the sun. Yeah, I had a whole conversation. I'm actually flashing back to a whole conversation I had with a coworker who's Jewish about the lunar cycle and why Easter had to be on the day Easter was, that particular year. Yeah. Because of the lunar cycle. And we'll talk about that being one of the motivations which eventually takes place, for example, for the Gregorian reform of the Julian calendar, is that it's very important for Christians that they want to be celebrating Easter at the correct time. And we actually have even differences inside of elements of Christendom today in terms of how they celebrate Easter. Uh, when it comes to Passover, for example, which Easter is tied to, with Passover being a Jewish feast, it does also relate to a lunar cycle. So yep. it relies upon the uh, on the moon. So there have been a number of calendars over history uh, that were based more being lunar calendars than being solar calendars. But again, because there's not an exact ratio between the moon's phases and the and the earth circling of the sun and the earth circling of the sun is important because it constitutes and creates along with the axial tilt our t tilt and maybe a tilt too for all <laughs> tilt, but the axial tilt it comprises our seasons is that if you don't keep these things in something of a balance what eventually hap what do you start noticing is going to happen you start noticing that things don't match up with seasons and with things like that. There's no stopwatch. It's not like we, we start the stopwatch, the sun goes around, the moon goes around, and then we stop it. it, it it's not exact. We, we're not working with an exact science here. So if things are getting out of whack, I mean, seasons aren't matching up, days aren't matching up, hours aren't matching up. It's a whole, it's a whole snowball that right. happens. Right. And generally speaking, you know, whatever you want to go back to in man's history, when somebody was just Hunting, hunting for food, living by themselves, not participating in, in as much of a society. Uh, you probably just needed to keep track of, oh, it feels warm enough to actually start planting, or we need to make sure we've gathered enough provisions for the coming winter. winter. So you didn't necessarily need to know exactly what day it, it was. was in a classical sense, unless you had a reason for doing so. For example, a religious reason for doing so. So we find that, and that's true not just in Western religions or Western culture or, or what we think of as being the, the three major monotheistic religions. There are important religious festivals that exist in Eastern traditions, and many of them do tie around some concept of astronomy. And so it's the movement of the planets, the stars, the moon. So knowing when or when not to do the right things matters to a lot of different cultures. Yes, absolutely. And so it's most... History, historians believe that calendars primarily grew out of normally some need to keep track of a religious observance of some type or to deal with something that related to the natural phenomena of knowing when to plant. For example, the Egyptians knowing when the Nile was going to flood each year made a difference. So there was value to knowing generally where you were. But then over time, as society grew, there was a need to know more precisely when you were how long someone's term of office should be if it were, for example, inside the Roman Republic where they had annual limits on terms, or uh, how long a king reigned, how old someone was. was. These were all reasons that you needed to have a calendar. So we developed calendars, but then we started running into these various problems. problems. <laughs> so the first calendar that we're going to talk about here, because it really is the calendar that leads us to, we said our, our historical what-if was going to be 46 BC, Julius Caesar not reforming the Roman calendar, which at that time was called the Roman Republic calendar, calendar, into what we later know as the Julian calendar. So, Alexis, how many days of the week did the Romans have? I know how many months, how many days. Was it, was it seven? Or was it eight? Yes, and yes, and yes. In fact, what we come to find out as we study the Roman calendar, the Roman Republic calendar is that um, they did have some cycles of seven, but generally the Roman calendar centered around an eight-day week. So one of the other things to even get in our mind is that we are fixed around a seven-day week. Yes. And that is something that has existed in a lot of cultures for a lot of time, uh, but it is not something that has been absolute. Right. And it is something that has become part of our calendar primarily, uh, there are a number of reasons why, but primarily... Uh, because, again, of the religious observances, particularly those that dr grow out of Judaism and then later Christianity and Islam, that look around a particular day each week. For Jews, that's the Sabbath. For Christians, that's Sunday. 
which is representative of uh, of the Resurrection Day, celebrating that following the Sabbath. And for, for Muslims, uh, Fridays are important. And so each of the major world monotheistic religions has a different day of the week. Knowing when that day of the week is becomes very important. So the seven-day cycle. But it's important that we're so locked into that to realize that there have been other cycles. There were essentially a 15-day week that existed yep. inside of the, the Roman concept because that's one half of the lunar, lunar cycle. They had a market cycle that centered around every eight days. Mm-hmm. And then they actually didn't start out with 12 months, which we're most, most no. familiar with. How many months did they start out with? Ten. Started out with ten. And you still see the remnants of this in our current calendar. How does that show up? By the by the mo- by the uh, names of months. So give me an example of that. Like June. June. July. July. Now June is July is interesting because it's actually named for Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar. <laughs> but we our last four months of the year are called September, October, November, December. Mm-hmm. In Latin, you may be familiar with some of the prefixes that are on those months. Oct, like in October, stands for eight. Eight. But October is the... Tenth month. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> makes so much sense. Yeah. And the reason is, at the time that that month came to be known as October, October. it actually was the eighth the month. month. And thus, November, nine, nine. nine uh, December, the... Des- Deca, Deca, ten. Deca, ten. A- at the time, September, October, November, and December came to be, they were the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth month of the Roman calendar. And, uh, for example, March, which is named for Mars. Uh, th- there's other, other things that are there. But they had a ten-month calendar. Now, they also did not just break up the 365 or so days divided by ten. The months were basically the same approximate length as they are now. And that was to match up with what? The lunar cycle, the yeah. solar cycle. The, the, re- the reason that our months tend to revolve around this 29, 30, 31 concept is that ties well to the lunar, lunar cycle. Right. And so that's why we look at a month being that. In fact, if you ask most people how long is a month, they will tell you, well, it's 28 days, days. or 30, or it's four weeks. That's a whole other thing we can get into. <laughs> or 30 days or 31 days. And so the reasons that the months are sort of established the way they are is that they needed to tie to the something that was measurable. In this case, it was <clears throat> the moon. And so the way the Romans dealt with this with their 10-month calendar was that they recognized with their 10 months, and their 10 months alternated for the most part between 31 and 30 days uh, through some methodology there, was that they still had this amount of time left over. Yep. And so that amount of time that was left over, ironically, was actually during what season of the year? Winter. And so we think of January. In fact, we, we've said this is the first podcast of the new, new year, year because we, it will be released in what month? January. Has January always been the first month of the year? No. No. And it's not <laughs> And it's not the first month of the year in, all, in other calendars for other cultures. For example, we're all familiar with Chinese New, new year. year. We're certainly familiar with uh, the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. There's actually two different Jewish calendars. There's a religious year. There's a civil year that's been instituted over time. And so new, the New Year's Day is something of a arbitrary thing that's defined, right? Right. It's it's Again, it's a very Western concept. Right. Uh, and so at the time of the old Roman Republic calendar, the 10-month calendar, uh, they actually started the year in March. And it was approximately the time that we think of March being now, give or take. And there you're moving towards the event that shows the mark of that season being the what's called the spring equ- e- equinox. equinox. And so that's somewhere around on our current calendar. Again, now we have to adopt something <laughs> to establish this. Somewhere around March 21st, yes. 22nd. And so the year started for the Romans under the Republic calendar in the spring because it was a time of rebirth, renewal, planting. It's also when armies would go off to war. And so then they carried it through with their 10 months, and that left this period of time that was left over in the winter. Now, they had two months that were assigned to that, but those are the months that they played with the length on to be able uh, to get where they were. Alexis, can you explain even a little bit about how that worked? You know, I really can't. (laughs) Okay, then I'll do it, which is fair enough, is they actually had this idea of what we come to mean as January, 
which is in February, and they would vary that in length. February February standard length was normally 23 days. January was more the normal month, and this made for a big gap in the calendar, and so they had what they called intercalcularly days or intercalendar days that they would fit in or whole months they would fill in. And so the particular one that they had for that uh, related around this idea of inserting something called uh, Mercedonius. So some years to balance the calendar out, you would insert Mercedonius. It wouldn't happen every year. And in the years that you inserted Mercedonius, you would shorten February from 28 to 23 days to have room for Mercedonius. And you had to do this every so often. And of course, they had a regular schedule for doing that, right? I would hope so. You would hope so, and you would be wrong. <laughs> I hate to say it, because what the, it was actually tied to were the, uh, the, the, there was a priestly office. We're doing a lot of Roman history here, but I guess we have to. It's a Roman calendar. There was a priestly office known as the, the, uh, the Pontifex that was elected each year. And these were essentially the elected high priest. Calendar functions being tied to religious observances, they were the ones who, among their responsibilities, was to keep the calendar straight. So, it first of all, was a system that meant you didn't do the same thing every year. You sort of almost had to adjust it on the fly because it wasn't even a well-designed adjustment system. It yeah, sounds like. Adjustment system. And so what they would do is they would be the ones who would be responsible each year for determining whether there was going to be an uh, intercalary month that was known as Mercedonius. And so you had January and February, which happened every year, but they were sort of special months and they were different. And then some years you would throw in Mercedonius. But what actually began to happen inside of the Roman Republic culture is this was an opportunity for there to be some form of political... Yeah. This part I have heard about. Okay, so tell us about that. So what ended up happening was the people who were in power could essentially just lengthen months or years if they liked who was in power or they could shorten those months and years if they didn't like who was in power. So we talked kind of briefly earlier about needing a calendar to determine terms of office, lengths of office, how long people have been in office. So if you don't like necessarily who's in power at the time, just shorten the month, shorten the year. Problem solved. Yeah. Or, or, or if you like who's in power. <laughs> Just go ahead and lengthen it. Lengthen it here. And so what actually had come to be the case was this, this concept of the calendar, which you would think of as being a scientific thing, had actually turned into being something of a... Political thing? Political thing mm -hmm. tied to being a religious thing. And so Julius Caesar, who had traveled much of the world in his, in his military conquests and other things, became familiar with the Egyptian calendar, uh, when he was part of the conquest of Egypt, and came to realize through talking to some of the scholars that were there that there was a better way to do this, a more systematic way to do this. And part of that actually revolved around getting a better understanding of how long the year actually was. Because they struggled with that for a long period of time. Uh, because measuring that, yes, you could measure, for example, Stonehenge being an example of a monument in, not even in Rome, right? No. The sun rises on the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year, over a particular stone. stone when viewed from a particular place. And so that's how you know you've come back around to that day. The whole the whole monument is aligned around a lot of different things like that. And there's that happens all over the world. Mm -hmm. that, that's a very common phenomenon. So they understood how to track the sun. But in terms of understanding the exact length, and it varied a little bit in terms of because of lighting conditions and equino how the equinoxes and solstices play out at various latitudes, this was not an easy thing to know. No. So when Caesar came back from his conquest in Egypt and had risen to the position of having a great deal of autonomy and authority, one of the things he was able to propose was something that would fix this, this problem. And so... In the year 46, uh, he was able to convince the Roman Senate to adopt a more rational, rigorous type of calendar system. I guess, that, is that a fair way to describe it, Lex? Yeah, that's a fair way to describe it. And so in doing so, they standardized uh, what would happen with January and February. Uh, they standardized some of the other months, and they created a rule to deal with this problem that we've already expressed with that extra quarter of a day that builds up over a period of time. And so they instituted the first concept of what would be a elite day. Mm -hmm. Now, understand, this calendar was implemented and has nothing directly to do with days of the week. The months and the days of the number of days in the month are not directly correlated to days of the week. We see calendars 
expressed that way when we see them because we want to look at both things. What day of the month is this, but also what day of the week is this. Right. So so we overlay these two things that don't necessarily have to be right. connected to each other. As we talked about before, the Romans had an 8 or a 15 uh, there's one calendar that was been proposed that has a, the fact that there were there were several uh, Sumerian or Mesopotamian calendars that actually worked around and preferred uh, the concept of using 60s. Mm-hmm. And so there was actually a 60-day month uh, that can be put out there. So, again, that was arbitrary. But Julius Caesar's reform was pretty important in the sense that it actually created, for the first time in Rome, a fairly standardized calendar that worked well for a long period of time. Yep. What was the other advantage to Rome adopting a calendar in terms of how that spread around the world? Rome was kind of the epicenter (laughs) in terms of trade, in terms of knowledge, in terms of a lot of different things. So if Rome adopts something, it's not very long before that spreads and is adopted by several other cultures and several other civilizations around the world. Right. It's the Roman Empire. So if Rome has decided to do this, everyone inside the empire is now going to be using... Yeah, it's compulsory for everybody else in the empire. Yeah. So this was also during this period of time, though, that they sort of reworked things. And they had two months that used to be known as uh, the months that we think of as being the fifth and sixth months of the year that had different names. Um, Their original fifth and sixth months months of the year. Uh, so they actually moved, what, a couple of the reforms that happened, they moved the start of the year away from March. March. This is what got us into the whole situation where the month that bears December is actually the 12th month because they moved the New Year's back to the beginning of January, January. named for uh, the Roman god Janus. And they also, shortly after Caesar's death, or in honor of him, they actually renamed one of the months... For him, and that's the month that we now know as July. July. Now we're going to get one more renaming of the months. We're going to get the month that had previously been after that, uh, which is going to be renamed for Caesar's successor, which is going to be Augustus Caesar, and it's going to be called August. August. So one sixth of our modern month names come from being named after two Roman rulers, and obviously Julius Caesar was instrumental in getting this calendar put in place. And then um, uh, they, they honored Augustus with that. So we moved away from this Roman Republic calendar with its goofy 10 months, varying lengths. Ah, uh, we're going to throw some days in when somebody feels like, like it, it for either scientific reasons or... Just because. Just because political reasons to something that became more uniform. And so with it being the empire's calendar, it, it quickly spreads throughout all of the known Roman Empire, the areas that they influence... And so for most of the Western world, certainly this was not the case in other parts of the world. We're not focusing on those calendars today, although that would be a worthy exercise as well. Uh, This becomes the standard calendar. And it works pretty well for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there was sort of one flaw with the calendar. What was that? One flaw was, again, didn't really follow the, the solar year. So we have this issue of seasons not really matching after you... Go through a couple of cycles. Yeah, and, and because they had the wrong number in their head about how how they knew the year was longer than a, than a straight three hundred sixty five days, but they had the wrong number, so they didn't figure out the leap year or leap day rules yeah. exactly right. No, and so that by the time we come around to the, I guess we actually are coming around now to what century? We're coming around to the. The, the Gregorian calendar happens in fifteen eighty two. We're talking about the sixteenth century. century. What had actually happened was that people started to notice that there was enough slippage between the seasons and the calendar that something needed to be done, and scientific endeavors had come along to better measure and realize why this was happening. And so at this time now, with the Western world being Christian, um, the person who had the ability to correct this, and again, one of the major concerns was around, are we celebrating Easter correctly? Easter correctly. This was the main motivation for that is if we get far enough off here from the calendar and the solstices and the lunar things that happen after the equinox in the in the spring, we'll be celebrating Easter on the wrong date, which is something that the Christians did not want to do. Correct. Uh, Pope Gregory the Thirteenth comes along and makes a correction to the Julian calendar, to the calendar we use today, which is called the... Julian calendar, or Greg- Greg- Gregorian calendar. And he really didn't change anything substantial except nah. what? What did he change? He basically just changed 
the date to stop this drift that was happening with the equinoxes. So he changes it by about 10 days. Right. And they change the rules by which how leap days are inserted in such a way that yep. once it's changed, it's going to be correct and actually be correct. If we stay on the Gregorian calendar, we don't need a correction for this for several centuries. Right. Because of the way that things work through before things will get off enough. So they made minor corrections to the to the leap day phenomena or the leap year phenomena in such a way that um, in such a way that it's corrected. And so we have the Gregorian calendar, which really is just a, a minor tweaking of the Julian calendar. Yeah, it's really small. Although I do have to say, the rules for calculating a leap year, I'm really glad somebody else figured that out because it you can get in the weeds with that too. Just know that 2020 is a leap year, so 2024 will be a leap year too. Right, it's every, it's every four years and then there are exceptions and then, that. and then there's an override to the exception rule. so the general rule of thumb is it's a leap it's a leap year every four years uh in the years that are evenly divisible by four ex- unless it's a century year meaning for example 2100 will not be a leap year even though it's evenly divisible by four but 2000 was. Because it's that is evenly divisible by 400. <laughs> and so you override this. You don't do it every century rule with another rule that says, except every four centuries you do. So now that we've gotten all that straight, and again, there'll be plenty of links in the show notes for you to go and, and find this out. The Gregorian calendar now pretty much fixed fixed things for a period of time. But it also brought on confusion because in order to correct the calendar, they had to move time, or at least the calendar forward, 10 days at the time. Yes. It was 10 days out of whack. And so what happened was in uh, in uh, October, October of 1582, it went from October 5th to the next day being October 15th. 15th. And uh, people just took that in stride. <laughs> There was no... They were really easy going about it. Yeah, really easy going about Hey, no big deal. Is that really what happened? Uh, no. What did happen? Uh, there was some pushback. And uh, so much so that it took centuries more before countries even adopted this system. Yeah, in fact, one of the things that people actually thought was that they were somehow losing 10 days of their yeah. life. The, 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 the... Or if you say you had a birthday on October 7th, did you not have a birthday that year? Right. Because there was an October 7th that year. Right. And so the other thing that was going on was that by this point, Christendom had become divided. Yep. And so when the Catholic Pope decreed that there was going to be a new calendar, all the Protestant countries that uh, were, just went right along, right? Nah. Nah. And so as a result, for example, one of Alexis's favorite locations for history... Did they immediately adopt the Gregorian calendar? They did not. So when actually did they adopt the Gregorian calendar? They adopted the calendar, I want to say it was in the 1600s. Am I right? Uh, they actually, actually, it's later than that. It was uh, 1752 before uh, the British Empire adopted the Gregorian calendar. In fact, it had gone long enough they had to add additional days. days yeah, it went to 13 instead of 10. Yeah, because enough time had passed to uh, to cause that to happen. And in fact, there were still parts of the world uh, that were using the, the Julian calendar to some degree uh, that didn't even adopt until the 20th century in terms of doing this, and they had to add more days than that. So, the... There's a period of time from the late 16th century until the 18th century when actually when you're traveling around Europe depending on where you're traveling on the same day it may not be the same day date, date right at that time in fact I remember the first time that I encountered this was reading a, um, a, a book that I had to read for history in college about the Spanish Armada Spain Catholic country under the new calendar invading or attacking England not a Catholic country, country under the old calendar. And so one of the thing, first things that you encounter in the book, by the way, great book, Garrett Mattingly, it's called The Armada. At some point, actually, in the coming year, I think we're actually going to do an episode talking about the Spanish Armada uh, and it's, it, what would have happened if it had succeeded. But uh, the author very early on has to say, here's what I'm going to do about <laughs> dates, because depending on where he's telling the story, the same day has two different dates. And so there's conventions that are used. Some of them use like a slash between the dates. Yep. All kinds of things where they talk old style, new style. 
Uh, you'll even get the question that when you're talking about a date during this period of time, you have to clarify which date you're talking about. Yep. And so uh, bec- changing a calendar, as you can see, becomes quite a... a big thing. It's an undertaking. It can be done by uh, Julius Caesar as a Roman, leading an empire, because he's it's an empire. Empire. Uh, it can be done by uh, a religious leader with as much authority as the Pope because he's the... He's the Pope. He's the Pope. Uh, but it's a much more difficult thing to do. So again, a lot of this has been background for us to talk about the what-ifs, mm-hmm. uh, which are tough to figure out because it's like a lot of things is what would have been if there if it hadn't have been. But imagine the confusion of the situation that we had with the Roman Republic calendar or not having a standardized calendar. Again, a number of different calendar systems. Imagine what the confusion would have looked like if we had not had the Julian calendar not had it well adopted. Yeah. Uh, for example, events that we important events that we know about. Uh, trying to figure out when they happened. Uh, we'd be, we would be figuring out under which calendar, which we still do to a degree. But there was this widely held calendar that generally worked pretty well. If there is no Julian calendar, uh, which there was a lot more disparate, separate types of calendaring systems, we'd have just had more confusion than we have today. Right. I mean, the date that's immediately popping in my head, maybe because we're talking about the Julian calendar, is the day Julius Caesar is assassinated. Right. How do we know what day that is if we don't have a calendar? <laughs> yeah. He actually is assassinated, by the way, two years after he implements the calendar in 44 BC, BC on the Ides of, of March. March. <laughs> Uh, with now March not being the first first month month of the year, but being the third third month of the year. And so, you know, just even figuring out what a particular date was, the, 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 when we look at the Ides of March now, we know that we're talking about the middle of March, essentially March 15th. Uh, but again, pinning dates down. So if there had not been the adoption of the Julian calendar, one of the what ifs would be, we would just have a lot more confusion, even in modern times when we were trying to talk back to historical events. What calendar system were they using? How do we convert that to whatever calendar system we're using? Maybe there would still be a much wider disparate use of calendars all around the world. I think that's the more logical thing, is that eventually Rome's power fades. Right. And other empires arose. And so an entirely different calendar system may have risen in the place of the Julian system, if anything would have risen in the place of the Julian system. So I can see two immediate what-ifs. First of all, there's just no agreement on any one solid calendar, so you're constantly dealing with... In this country, it's the 47th year of so-and-so's reign, but that doesn't matter in this country because they don't know who that person is. Right, and so and so creating commonality, it's a lot like what languages create being a problem there in terms of you trans, you'd not just be translating language, you would constantly be translating... Years. Dates other things and you just have a lot more confusion history would be a much more muddled place if you couldn't fix it against a fixed timeline that timeline being derived by at least a more or less commonly accepted commonly used calendar so one of the things would be just the confusion of not having anything i can't see that that would last forever eventually something would have to be settled upon and the more and more trade grew to be the case there was the need or the ability to be able to relate to common dates across borders. So I would advocate that the most likely what if is a delayed introduction of some type of systemized calendar, and that systemized calendar would have been at the mercy of whoever had enough control, authority, or the ability to impose it in much the same way that Caesar was able to impose it. So that's one potential what if. Yeah, and I think that's a really strong what if. The other possibility would be uh, that we would have continued under this really goofy Roman Republic system, and that may have become the adopted calendar of whatever. And so we would have had something that would have been confusing, muddled, and maybe it doesn't become the the, 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 pont- the Pontifex Maximus who make that decision, but somebody else who makes that decision over time. And so calendars could have become even more arbitrary and... Subjective. And political as a result of that. And so one of the things that we would have in a, in a non-Julian calendar world, uh, particularly if it, something didn't eventually become its place... In addition to the confusion, we could have the potential for something for the calendar to once again be something that was much more politicized. Right. And that that could be a dangerous place to be. So can you think of any other major what-if differences if we hadn't have gotten the Julian calendar? Well, we talked about Julius Caesar going to Egypt and seeing how they did it. And so what I keep going back to is what if we had a 
system that rose up that was more along the eastern uh, lines of those calendars or uh, African in that sense with, with Egypt, what would have happened if those would have become the predominant uh, calendar across the world? Um, because those calendars did exist and they've existed for much longer in some instances than we've had the Julian calendar even. Uh, if we go back to a Chinese calendar, those are many millenniums old. Uh, so is it possible that one of those systems maybe would have rose up? If we don't have the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire, do we have a, an Eastern Empire rising up? Do we have an African Empire rising up? And what would that influence have been? Right. Or, for example, imagine that if there's no Julian calendar, you do have the influx and rise of Islam, which, which came to dominate a very large portion of the world. So that calendar still exists today, mm -hmm. and it's still used today, so I don't want to leave the impression that it's not, but for business purposes, it more or less, the, those societies have adopted towards the towards the Gregorian calendar as a, not because a uh, Catholic Pope declaring that, but because that's the the business standard of the right, world. Right, it's become standard. Yeah, and, and so that type of calendar may have arisen to have more of a more of an influence, or that calendar may, remember, that later concept are borrowed from Arabic concept. For example, the concept of zero didn't exist right. uh, mathematically or in the Roman numeral type of concept that's borrowed from Arabic numerals Yeah. because of the ability to do calculation. So maybe somebody would have said, you know, this Arabic calendar works a whole lot better than this Roman Republic calendar. And so that might have been adopted just because of its effectiveness even more yeah. so than anything else. And not to say it wouldn't have evolved and changed much like the Julian calendar did, but it would have been a different basis. Right, right. And then, the, you know, the other thing that actually happens, uh, which I think is something to talk about there being the, the historical what if, is somebody could have come along and created an entirely different system for whatever reason that would have been chosen to be adopted. I don't know, the part of the problem with the what if is I don't know what that would have been because we think of now any system having to compete with the Julian slash Gregorian calendar. But if there's nothing to compete with and what you're using is not very... Intuitive. Intuitive, it's not very effective. It has a lot of issues. Anything that might have been better could have come along. And of course, we're not dealing at all with any of the lunar-based type calendars right. that uh, that could have be become the norm. We have a calendar that is primarily solar in its annual orientation that has the elements that come with months because of the lunar the lunar things that are there. And so, you know, the first what if is really, a t I think the tougher what if to answer is that what would have been instead of the Julian calendar, I don't know. I think there would have been something, and, and when that would have happened, I don't think it would have been a thousand years. It probably would have been hundreds of years. Uh, for example, it's easy to imagine uh, if you still follow the same trajectory of history where Christianity rises to become the official calendar of the Rome, the official religion of the Roman Empire, and thus the Christian calendar takes over the Julian calendar to so many ways. It's easy to imagine if there's no Julian calendar, perhaps because of Christianity's roots in Judaism is that that may have become the predominant calendar. Yep. Uh, I, I can easily see a scenario where the Hebrew calendar is the calendar that gains preference only because there's no Julian calendar. Christians... And Christians are the predominant religion, so they let's look, use that calendar. They, they, they look to something, they look to the, the, the calendar that was used that's part of the origin of Christianity in the Old Testament uh, to be able to do that. So... It, that's a, we spent a lot more time talking about the what did. That what if is pretty short, but the what if is a really hard thing to answer. It's hard to know what we would have had otherwise. But I think we would have had something very different. different. Certainly the names of the months, for example, would be different because they came from... Roman Empire. Right. Roman Empires. But ironically, the, the names of the week that we have are primarily Norse in their in their origin. Right. Thursday is sh short for Thor Thor Thursday. Day. Wednesday for Woden's Day. Right. Uh, so it's it's it, it, it's interesting, and then they're also named for the planets. Saturday for Saturn's day, uh, the sun and the moon. So it's the um, it's it's interesting to see how there's the different influences that are that are mixed together. Uh, but we wouldn't probably have uh, well, what else? I think we can probably say is we wouldn't have this odd thing where our twelfth month of the year is named for something that is on a base of ten. Right. That that probably wouldn't exist. So let's talk more about the later what if. Because uh, what does eventually happen, and this, this arises primarily in the period of time between the First and the Second World War, 
the League of Nations. Ultimately, this will be brought up again by the UN. There are moves afoot now to say we need a new calendar. <laughs> and so we talked about one example of that, the world calendar. There's various versions of this. Um, but what are some of the challenges that we face under the Julian calendar even today? What are some of the reasons that somebody would say, yeah, it keeps the seasons in line and that whole leap day thing works pretty well now after Gregory fixed it. Uh, so we, we've adopted that. But what are some of the challenges that are still faced even under a Julian calendar? So one of the biggest challenges I know that I face in my professional life and my personal life is when you're dealing with things in terms of a fiscal sense. So if you're dealing with the Gregorian calendar, most of the months, of course, have 31, 30 days. Then you have this weird February, which, of course, I'm partial to February. It's my birthday month. It's your birthday month. Um, but it's only got 28. So when you're dealing with things, especially when you're to dealing with things where you're having to compare... For instance, there's a lot of things that I have to do in my job where I have to compare January to February. It's really hard to compare a 31-day month to a 28-day month and to justify why numbers don't make sense or why numbers aren't adding up. So that's one of the biggest kind of shortcomings I see is when you're having to look at comparisons and having to look at things on a business sense, the, the numbers are a little wonky and they don't make things work well for comparison's right. sake. For, for example, using a seven-day week with a five-day work week, uh, February, unless it's a leap month, will never have more than 20 work days. Right. January can have, because of the extra three days that exist, if those happen to fall during a work week, <laughs> can have as many as 23 yep. uh, work days. Then also, depending on when New Year's Day falls, and is, it, is it a holiday, and it, did it fall on the weekend, or did it fall otherwise? And so your point is well taken that comparing month to month becomes different. And we don't even have regularity across what we think of as being quarters. So January, February, March, February being the short month in the middle of that, does not compare the same way to April, May, June. April, the April, May, June period, assuming Q2, the second quarter, if you're using a calendar year or fiscal year, has two 30-day months and one 31-day month. The first quarter sort of up, makes up a little bit for that in the sense that January and March are both 31-day months. So that gives you one extra 31-day month. But again, you lose three of those back in February. So now not only is month to month different, but quarter to quarter, quarter is different. And then when you get into the latter half of the year, July, August, and September, now you, July, August, and July, August, and September, July, and August are both 31-day months, so you pick up that being different than the second quarter by one day. day, and then when you get into the final three months of the year, now we're talking about October, November, December, they happen to nicely match the third quarter because there's two 31-day months, but again, they're both out of whack compared back to the first and second quarter. Right. So one of the things that's been proposed is couldn't we have a calendar that deals better with that? So that that's one of the examples. What else is a problem that's generated by the Julian calendar? Do you know of anything else, Lex? I can't think of anything else. Well, one of the other things is the fact that it doesn't divide evenly into the concept of days if you're using a seven day week and pretty much the seven day week has become the norm for a number of different reasons but one of the primary reasons the seven day week is the norm is what religious religious as we mentioned before there are three major world religions monotheistic religions that recognize a given day of the week on a, on a recycling basis in addition to other days but particularly those that are special or that are considered holy or, or to be set aside for jews that's the sabbath day which falls on what we think of as being our modern Saturday. Saturday. Uh, for Christians, that's Sunday. And for uh, for Islam, that's on Friday. Monday. So every week, the seven-day cycle is very important for religious reasons. For the most devout of, of anyone in those religions, there normally are prohibitions against working on those days or doing certain things on those days, uh, some being more restrictive than others. But you need to keep track of what day of the week it is. And... Seven does not divide evenly. Into 365 or 366. Right. And so we have this phenomenon that we talked about before where on a given date on the calendar, the day of the week that it represents the in a, in a subsequent year or the previous year will not be the same. For example, do you have any idea without looking it up 
an American holiday, which is important to us, which is July 4th. Do you have any idea what July 4th of 1776 was? I do not. It was a Thursday. I just happened to know that <laughs> because I remember looking that up in the past. Uh, do you happen to know, I'm not going to give the exact date of your birthday, protecting your identity that way, <laughs> but you were born on a particular day in February. Mm-hmm. Do you happen to know what day of the week that was? I think it was a Friday. It was a Friday. I remember that because I, you were there. I also remember that because I was there, but I was cognizant of what day of the week it was. <laughs> I happen to know that Alexis was born on a Friday, which means that I also know in the year 1991, the year of her birth, that my birthday, which is two weeks prior to hers, would have also fallen on a Friday. Friday. If you ask me randomly what day... Did my birthday fall on in a year, let's say, 1982? I probably can... You can little, figure it out. I can figure it out, or I can... Thank, thank you, Mr. Internet, I can look <laughs> it up. But it's not intuitive to you. Why? Because those days slide through the calendar as we know it now, because there's not the right alignment. Seven is an important number, though, for the reasons that we've talked about now. So there's a lot of desire to keep a seven-day week that's built in by... Uh, cultural and religious regions that exist around the world. Uh, but it's a problem when you're comparing that to the actual calendar for date purposes. So, for example, in the world calendar, we're going to include links into this so people can actually see this and grasp it better. By the way, I'm not advocating for a world calendar. <laughs> Let me just go on record right now. But I see the issues that it's trying to solve. What, what, what are some of the things they do in the world calendar? So some of the things they do in the world calendar is they break up the year so that each quarter is a specific number of days. It's an equal number of days. It's 91 in a quarter. So the first month of a quarter, so in this instance it would be January, April, July, and October, they all have 31 days. And then the pre the following months both have 30 days. Okay. So it's 31, 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, all the way through the year. They're all equal. So February is no longer this short-changed or slightly less short-changed month. Right. And so there's uniformity across the quarters, the thing that you were talking about. And there's uniformity for the most part across the months. The most you ever have to deal with is a one-day one discrepancy between that and the other. Now, the phenomena of doing that means that you end up with 364 days that are covered by this uh, 31, 30, 30, or 91, 91, 91, 91. where you actually get down to um, to where you have 364 days. Yep. The sun goes, the earth goes around the sun in how many days? 365. Plus a fraction. Plus, yeah, and roughly. S- and so you have to figure out what to do with that extra solar day. Mm -hmm. So again, what's the world calendar solution to that? That would be World's Day. World's Day. And so they stick that where? That would be the day following December 30th. Remember I mentioned December falls at the end of the quarter. It has 30 days. Right. So World's Day is the day after that. Yeah. So one of the interesting things to me there, and I don't understand this why they didn't go 30, 30, 31, uh, actually, I have to look sort of a chart to figure that out. But, for example, the months that we know them now don't have the same number of date, days right. under the world days under the world calendar. January is a 31-day month now. Under the world calendar, it would also be a 31-day month. March is presently a 31-day month, but it would become a 30-day 30. 30 month. April is presently a 30-day month, but it would become a 31-day month. May has 31, would become 30. 30. June would stay 30. You can go through and do this for yourself. We don't need to do it all the way through. But we would need to get to adjust. You know, we sometimes joke about, yeah, I'll do that on I'll do that on April 31st under our current calendar. Or the 12th of never. The 12th of never, right. And so, but if I say I'm going to do something on April 31st, and you stop and think about the calendar, what does that tell you? That doesn't exist. I'm not going to do it. There is no <laughs> April 31st. Uh, or February 30th. I'll take care of that on February 30th. Under the world calendar... There would be a February yeah, 30th. Yeah, you'd have to do it. Right. So one of the interesting things there is that it does make some changes, even though it's keeping some things the same, but it has to make changes for the reasons that we've talked about. So they create this concept. It's an artificial construct called World's Day. And they do that so that you don't mess up the other 12 months nice. and this idea of making them uniform quarters. And so one of the phenomena of the world calendar is every quarter starts on the same day of the week right mm-hmm. so january 1 always falls on what 
That would always fall on Sunday. It would always fall on Sunday. And thus, April 1 is always a Sunday. What does that tell us automatically about July 1? Sunday. What does that tell us about October 1? Sunday. Because it's always going to be a Sunday. Uh, That also means that every year, every date remains on the exact same day. Which is interesting because we talked earlier about the phenomena of birthdays. Yep. Uh, For the coming year, um, our birthdays fall on a Saturday. Yes. And that's cool. It's sometimes cool when your birthday falls on a a weekend, right? Yep, I like it. Yeah. Uh, But it also means that under a world calendar, your birthday would always fall on... A Wednesday. A Wednesday. How do you feel about that? Can you tell by my voice? I do not advocate for this. You can see Alexis' face... Uh, she just made a sad face emoji with her face because she wouldn't like the fact that she's on Wednesday. Now, there's somebody who's happy because their birthday is always a Friday. It's always a Saturday. Uh, but one of the the pluses of this world calendar concept is that you get regularity. One of the downsides of this concept is you get... Regularity? Yeah. <laughs> So Monotony. Now, Let's use the word monotony. Monotony is a better word. I'm glad you sort of came to that word and suggested that word because it's regularity is good, but regularity expressed otherwise is monotonous, right? Uh, so given that phenomenon, um, again, we're a, we're a what if podcast. So let's go to the what if here. How do you, if we were living under this calendar, let's say somebody had had the power in 1930 to just impose that calendar. How do you think people would be responding to that? I suspect there'd be some tension. Yeah. Probably wouldn't be from someone like me or you who was born after that date because it would have just been the calendar we always knew. Nope. But if we go back to the example of the Gregorian calendar, when it was put in, that was an upsetting thing. Changing your calendar, you know, meant something. In fact, it literally meant for those folks, now they were just correcting the astronomical problem with their calendar. But technically, if they had done it right, some people should have updated their birthdays because the date they thought they were born on in the old style was not the correct date in the new style. Now again that's only a problem for those that are alive during the transition because everybody after the transition is is fine. is fine and taken care of and if you didn't live through the transition then you were fine before. But I think one of the historical what ifs is you would have had uh, some revulsion back to that. You would have had some uh, opposition to it and people probably would not have been Yes, there would be benefits to that. Business is happy. We get a consistent number of work days. We get, for accounting purposes, we get consistent financial quarters. quarters that we can deal with. So there's the pluses of that, but you lose some of the flavor in your social life. So, you know, the what if trade off to that to me is that, okay, my work calendar for the folks down in accounting makes a lot more sense, but I'm stuck every Wednesday being, my birthday always falls on a Wednesday, Wednesday. which means if I want to be not at work on my birthday my employer there has to grant me that always as a day off or i have to take a vacation day where somebody who's lucky enough to have their birthday fall on a saturday doesn't have to deal with that each year there's some inequality that gets built in so to me one of the what if interesting realities of these of that being the what if calendar if we were functioning on that calendar is in the process of creating some equality it would create some disparity disparity and inequality. That would be the, the unintended consequence. Now, that's a small thing. Do I get to be off on my birthday without taking a vacation day? Unless it's something that you have to deal with every year. year. <laughs> and it's never going to change. change. So that would be one of the particular what ifs. But I think the bigger what if, and I think the primary, I know it's the reason why this calendar does not exist is uh, it's the concept of what you do with this extra day in creating that uniformity. It's the concept of world stay. I don't think people would be as or, or as opposed to the world calendar. I think you could get them over that hump. My take and why the, the what if and how this would be very different if we had it is how people would respond to this concept of world stay. Yeah. So what are some of the problems in the in the world that the world calendar was imposed? What are some of the problems that are created by world stay? It's this weird, it's not even a day of the week. It's just, it's World's Day. So it's, it's, what do you do with it? It, I mean, okay, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a world holiday, but. Eric, by the way, that was air quotes. Yeah, that was, that was air quotes for people who can't see me. But what do you do with it? Because it's just this kind of nebulous concept that doesn't really fit anything. <laughs> okay. 
Right. And and it also means now that again, it, it sits outside of the... If you want to think of it, it's set outside the month structure. Okay, it's just this special one-day month. I could deal with world. I could deal with the month right. of, of World's Day. It's the thirteenth month, so that everything else is uniform to a degree. That makes sense. Makes sense to a degree, right? But it's the concept that in order to make it work, because of the desire to have the days of the week be uniform, which. I question why that needs to be, but we won't even chase down that path. I read all kinds of things about it. You will, too, if you follow some of the links that we include in the podcast notes. Uh, but there's the the concept of it. It actually it, it, it does not exist as a day of the week. Right. So you're rolling along, and December 30th, the last day of December under the world calendar, Never. is a Saturday. So it's on the 29th, it was Friday. On the 30th, it's Saturday. Tomorrow, it's World's Day, and it is... World's Day. World's Day. It's not Sunday. Right. So if you are, for example, a practicing Christian where you choose to worship on Sunday, you would normally be worshiping on Sunday, except now it's World's, World's Day. Day. Well, holidays fall on Sunday, so you'll deal with that. Uh, except it's not Sunday, because what's tomorrow going to be? Sunday. Sunday. It's going to be Sunday, January 1st. First. So, just taking that perspective, because the way it's lined out, it happens to hit on Sundays. This same thing could happen, for example, to observant Jews for a for a Saturday. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with that? Do you, well, my guess is, particularly if you're observant, is you don't like the idea that the calendar has been altered by this one day. So, you keep a separate calendar on the side that tells you when the real yeah. Sabbath is. And so, once what happens? Once every seven years... The world calendar happens to be back in line with your religious, religious calendar. calendar, but for the other six, it's not. And so you have to make what choice? Do you observe the Sabbath? Do you not? Or you do you observe the world calendar imposed Sabbath, or the one that you have been traditionally keeping? Now, you may argue, argue, well, that's not a big thing. In fact, the advocates for it will say, well, you can just treat it as an extra day of rest or worship. And so you're not losing anything. You're actually gaining gaining something. But we all know that if people were worried about the transition for the Gregorian calendar, this is going to be a major issue. And for some of the most observant, those who religiously is the reason we have that as an adjective, who religiously follow that, they're not going to be satisfied that a secular imposition has been overridden over their religious calendar, right? Right. So that was one of the major objections to the world calendar being adopted. So let's say that it had been adopted. What do you think we would have had? I think you would have had some religious revolts. I think um, people who are very... The word that's coming to my mind is fanatical, and that's not the... Devout. People who are very devout to their faith would not have taken kindly to this subjective thing being put on them. Um, so I think there would have been this this movement between Christians, Muslims, the, the big three, the Christ- Christians, Muslims, and Jews, to say, no, 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 no. <laughs> we have our calendar. It's worked for us. Don't try to impose something on me. Right. Or imagine the scenario where somebody says, I, I'm an observer, and I'm going, to, I'm going to use Christians here because I am one, so that I'm not, it doesn't appear that I'm, 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 I'm doing something for somebody who doesn't have my belief system. So let's say Sundays are important to me, and I believe in the, my concept of the Sabbath adapted from, from, from Judaism into Christianity is, is Sunday as, as a day of rest, a, a day, of, of, day of, of, of corporate worship. So imagine that I want to attain to that, but yet I, I, ha- I want to do that in the way that it has been. So suddenly now I'm coming to my employer and saying, here's the deal. My what used to be my Sundays this year now fall on Tuesday, <laughs> and so what I want to do is I'm okay with working Sunday under the world calendar. I just want every Tuesday off. Tuesday off. Uh, you probably would not see that as much uh, among Christians, although there certainly are. But you would definitely see that among Orthodox Jews. You would see that definitely among Muslims. Who adhere to who adhere to the, the rules regarding regarding Friday, that'd be a problem. Yep, and it'd be a problem in the sense that it it doesn't this this move towards consistency gets you into a situation where you uh, where you don't have that. 
So I think that my take on what would have happened is I think you probably could have convinced a portion of the world, particularly during that period of time, sort of under a modern concept to move to this, let's fix the problem with months and how that works a little bit better. Uh, but you would have seen a, a move away saying, but no, it doesn't need to, days of the week don't have to tie to months, months in the same way. And so we'll adopt this, yes, cleaning up the quarter to quarter, although you still don't have the problem of the moving um, number, the moving days of the week through that, although it's not as big when you think about it once you unify or, or standardize the, the length of months. I think people would have said, yeah, we'll adopt it. We're okay with it being a, a this concept of a of 12 months of 31, 30, 30. And okay, to balance that, you have this one day that's not any month it's you can call it world's day and we can treat it as a as a holiday okay. we're good with that but don't mess with our days of the week. week so i think the more likely scenario if there'd been adoption of this calendar when it was first proposed and eventually the un took this over after world war ii tried to push it through uh, the united states actually vetoed this at, at, i guess i don't know how it came to a security council but it, but it didn't pass through the un that was was shelved i think you would have seen the what if would have been yeah we'll go to that but we're not going to scratch the the days of the week concept uh now we haven't even that, that's world's day that happens every year you still have the problem of leap year leap years so you still have the problem of every four years what do you have to do you have to have a leap day you have to have a leap day or add another leap day so how does the world calendar solve that so leap day happens the day it's either after or before July first. So so second quarter, they add this arbitrary day and treat it just like World's Day. It's labeled W. It is not a day of the week, and it's another holiday. Yeah. So uh, you pick up a second World's Day in your leap years, and instead of sticking it between December and January, they stick it halfway around the calendar way they stick it between June and July. July and resolve that there. But again, it's also not a... Day of the week. And that's to keep in line this idea of having uniformity to the... Days of the week. Days of the week. <laughs> and so uh, and so that that's, again, another, another objection you would have had because it's not just that you have to deal with this on a one-day okay. scenario, but you actually... Now you have to. Uh, every four years, you have to deal with it twice. So I think, again, the what-if scenario there, reminding people we are that, not just a calendar podcast, but reminding we're a what-if podcast, I think you would also have more objection to, again, okay, even if we go for this one time when we don't count it as a day of the week, we're going to have to do that twice, twice every four years and figure it out from there. Now, we focused on the world calendar here as being just one example of this. There are other examples as well. I found calendar examples, again, we'll include a lot of these links in the show notes because it's, it's, it's worthy of you just, if you're interested about it, reading it on your own instead of us talking to you about it. But there are concepts, for example, that end up using a leap week. So, for example, you don't adjust um, on the same, or, or you adjust the number of calendar um you adjust the number of calendar days in such a way that what you insert occasionally to solve the month problem is you insert a full seven day week week to adjust for keeping your calendar uniform as well as your calendar working well with the solar year. So there's more than one way that's been proposed to fix this. There's even one solution that I saw. The fact this is another popular solution, which again I don't want to spend a whole another 50 minutes describing that. That uses a 13 month calendar mm -hmm. that uses some variation of this. And so there have been a lot of different ways to try to go at this scenario uh, without um, without creating maybe as much disruption to the the week cycle. In fact, one of the interesting things I bumped into was this idea of creating a six day week. week. And if you saw that that yep. referenced or not, what was the advantage of the six day week? Did you, did you see some of the advantages expressed on that? No, I saw the I saw the six day week, but didn't get too into the advantages and disadvantages of it. Well, the thing that I read about was the concept of reducing the work week. You would still have two days yes. of every week that would not be part of the work week, and so you would actually have a four day work week, two day weekend, four day work week, two day weekend. That sounds. That sounds. Great. Great. It also creates, again, so the way that would be set up, it creates some uniformity in terms of how you make... One of those concepts I saw revolved around a 60-day month because 
60 divided by 6 works really well. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the things that are there. But you still you have, now you have the problem from the other perspective of, of disrupting the religious seven-day yep. cycles. Because now it, the problem before was you throw this extra day in. Now the, the bigger problem that now you have is... Now you took a day away. And you take that day away... All the time. All the time. So it's constantly comparing the six to the seven-day week versus a seven-day week versus a seven-day week, but occasionally throwing this non-value in the middle of it. So, uh, again, I think in a modern sense, we talked about what would have happened with the Julian calendar. I think there would be a lot of confusion. Ironically, the modern solutions to get rid of some of the downfalls of the Julian calendar, I think, actually introduce more... Confusion? Confusion. So, to me, if I were to try to summarize the what-ifs, the first what-if is no Julian calendar, a lot more confusing about the things that we talked about, how do you pin down dates. If you adopt in a modern sense, some of these modern, more scientific, standardized calendars, you create more confusion because now you're trying to deal with... You're almost making things too uniform. Right. You're losing a little bit of that nuance that that makes a calendar a calendar. Right. And you also are are, are now uh, stressing a lot of these, again, mainly religious, but also social fabrics. I mean, we think of the the, the seven-day week... Generally speaking, in most Western countries, five days work, two days weekend. That ra- that ratio, the way employees have organized around that, functions around those things. If you suddenly go to a six-day work week. What it, does that mean? And there are advantages, there's pros and cons to that that go on with that. So, again, I, we just thought this would be an interesting topic. I don't know if it fits super well into the what-if scenario, except that it's imagining that our present what did, we are so ingrained with the concept of calendar as we know it, that it's very difficult to think outside the box to imagine what it would be like to have a different calendaring system. system. But we do know when we look at the transitions in calendars historically. For example, that year, I, I wanted to mention this earlier, the year that Caesar made the adjustment, he made the adjustment by creating what is probably the longest year that will ever exist. I'm going to look real quickly here on the internet to the note that I have. I think the conversion year ended up being a 400 and... Isn't it like 447 days? 447, 446. That's the number that immediately pops into my head. Uh, It's one of these things, again, that we can know, uh, so we probably should know. But um, it's, it's amazing to think that in order to make it right, there was this day that lasted for... About 90 days <laughs> more than what was there to go through transition. And so you think people were probably a little um, a little upset about what that was. That was a tough transition. And so um, we, uh, we know that between that, the Gregorian calendar, other types of, of, of transitional systems, that those, uh, if we had to endure one of those in modern times, one of the other what-ifs I thought about it was imagine now if we were to adopt the what if of what if we adopted the world calendar now? Because there's another move to do that. By the way, they keep wanting to adopt it in certain years because that aligns with making it naturally begin on the on the Sunday on the Sunday thing. So 2023, mm-hmm. I think, is the next push window, and then I guess it goes beyond that to uh, 2030 or 20. Again, leap days factor into this, right? Is um, is I one of the things that occurred to my mind is imagine computer code. Oh, goodness gracious. Where, if you remember, we the major issue that we had with Y2K because of computer systems not dealing well with having the... moving from a 19XX date to a 20XX date. Imagine the scenario where suddenly programs that have been built that, for example, would look at the input of February 30th as an invalid... Date. value they wouldn't know how to calculate there would be a lot of implications one of the what ifs even if you saw the I mean jumped in, oh the benefits okay this uniformity of quarters okay the length of a quarter for financial and accounting reasons that's great until your accounting software which was written to work under a Gregorian calendar doesn't work doesn't work or you have to buy or replace it so you get the benefit of well I don't have to do this occasional when I'm doing comparisons figure that out but everything that I'm currently doing today has to be redone, redone or replaced. Um, so you know, one of the when you and, and a little bit, I think they're sort of utopian type folks that recommend these concepts when they come along and say, "Hey, let's just not thinking through the fact that Y2K was a major yep. disruption in business in terms of the economics. Imagine fixing your calendaring systems, your your accounting systems, your billing systems." systems. 
your banking systems that are all built around the fact that certain dates exist. And remember, under, for example, under a world calendar scenario, some of the dates that exist today would go away okay. and new dates that don't exist today would be created. Forgetting totally what do you do with interest calculation? Does interest accrue on World's Day? I was going to ask that question. Are there no transactions that occur on World's Day? Because it's not a day of the week. Right. Now, if you were born on World's Day, by the way, your your birthday would be the next World's, World's Day. Day. You'd only deal with the, the leap day problem of how do you how do you deal with that? Oh, can course. you imagine being born on leap day? I mean, it's it's the same now, but yeah, but it's um, yeah, but 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 what day of the week was that? It wasn't a day of the week. Yeah. Again, I, I struggle <laughs> with that. As Alexis said, they just the, the when you see the things uh, promulgated here, the day of the week is W. Yep. So not Wednesday. No, just W. And uh, so it, it's just tough to get around that. So. Again, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the topic today. It's a little bit different than what we normally do. It was fun. But I thought it would be a good topic as we're launching off the first of the year here to go into there. And as we launch off the first of the year, we've actually made it through our launch year into now. It's not our second year producing the podcast in terms of being around for more than a year, but we're now into our second year of the podcast. So we are obligated because we are from the southern part of the United States to say what? Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. We're saying thanks again. So we we hope that uh, during 2019, one of the things that you enjoyed, as we enjoyed producing the podcast, uh, was that you enjoyed finding and listening to the podcast. And so as we are now in 2020, by the way, by the time you're hearing this, Happy New, New Year. Year. And I'm not wishing Happy World's Day because it doesn't exist yet. It would have already, by the way, already would have happened. happened. So it's in the past. But um, And by the way, it would also not be uh, New Year yet if we were still under the... Julian calendar. We would, this podcast will be being released in late December. But as we're here in 2020, we just want to say once again, thank you for being a listener. Thank you for participating. And we would invite you to do all the things that we've talked about before, which is share the podcast on social media. Visit our website at www.aforkintimepodcast.com. Uh, there's the number of ways that you can interact with us, give us suggestions. Um, and also, of course, uh, the links there that exist to our Patreon page of participating in the podcast financially is something that you can and want to do. We make that easy for you, and we would appreciate that as well. Anything you want to say, Lex, as we're signing off or closing off? I failed in my quest. I was going to get better in social media at the end of 2019. So we're going to start fresh with 2020, guys. It's going to happen. It's a, it's a New Year's resolution. And uh, as I was reminded by something that I read in the process of preparing for this, if you find here in a couple of weeks that you haven't kept your New Year's resolution, just tell people you're going back to the Julian calendar. There you go. And then you get a chance to start back over with what would have been under the Julian calendar, uh, January 1. So if nothing else, you learned a loophole to uh, to reset your New Year's resolutions as a result of listening to the podcast. Perfect. Today. There you go. That's probably, I don't know if that's a good note to close on. <laughs> it's, it's a note to close on. So it's, we'll, a, it's a pertinent note. It's a pertinent note. So we'll close on that note. Also, just let you know that we have a lot of stuff that we do have planned in the coming year. One of the things that we've already laid out is we're trying to be more intentional about our... We have a whole editorial calendar, and I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> For somebody who works in marketing and media, the fact that we created an editorial <laughs> calendar uh, is something that she's excited about, where we're looking more ahead. Because I do like to tie topics to dates that are sort of relevant in the real world, so it's easier to do that when we're looking ahead. And we already do have plans for, I know for later January episodes, which are not yet recorded, but will be by the uh, by the time this is released, uh, for a couple of different more guest appearances. As we, uh, we The feedback that we have from our listeners is they like our guest appearances, and so you'll be seeing more of those. And if you want to be a guest and appear on the podcast or suggest a topic, those are all things that you can do at a aforkintimepodcast.com. Uh, they're on the website. So, again, this is Don. Alexis. And we're signing off for this particular episode of A Fork in Time. And once again, just reminding you that if you happen to uh, reach a fork in time, a fork in the road, what should you do? Take it. Have a great day.
Thanks for listening to A Fork in Time, the alternate history podcast. Join us next time.